Hey guys, you know, we live in a world that's full of sin. Sin came into this world and infected everything. So every single human out there, every one of us, we have a sinful nature. That includes you and me. Your parents never had to tell you as a kid to be naughty or showed you how to throw tantrums and scream and be selfish. You just were. You just did it. In fact, they had to tell you over and over again as you grew up to be good. A lot of people think that we are just good and sometimes we do bad things. No, we are actually evil. We're actually bad and we keep on sinning. It is only God's values, morals, principles, commandments that taught humankind to be better. David said in Psalm 51 verse 5, Behold, I was brought forth in iniquity, and in sin did my mother conceive me. So that also means that if you live in a world where people are sinful, that you will encounter sinful people. And some of those people might use and give in to that sinful nature to treat you like rubbish. I'm sure it happened to a lot of you already. It happened to me as well. But we always need to remember Ephesians 6 verse 12 says, For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the cosmic powers over this present darkness, against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly places. There's always evil working behind the scenes that we cannot see. And we sometimes just focus on the physical world. But behind people, there's an evil system at work to bring more pain and suffering into this world. Jesus understood this. When people treated him, whew, I mean, he experienced the worst of the worst through his crucifixion. And he understood this. And that is why he said in Luke 23, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. Most rude, selfish, and arrogant people, bullies, are that way because it's how they grew up. It's maybe things that's going on at their house, you know, where they are being bullied. And it might be because they are just ignorant. So can you stand up for yourself? And how do you do it from a biblical perspective? Well, it depends on the situation, the person, and what God wants you to do. There were times when Jesus ignored people where he said nothing. Other times he answered them with confidence and even rebuked them. And he also called the Pharisees names like snakes and vipers. For example, Matthew 12 verse 34, You brood of vipers, how can you speak good when you are evil? For out of the abundance of the heart the mouth speaks. You know, today, if a Christian preacher says this, he will be judged by the church. If he calls people, you brood of vipers, you snakes, how can you do this? <laughs> because our society has become so sensitive. Sometimes it is required to talk a little bit more harsh to certain people because only then they will understand. They won't understand anything with soft, kind, nice words. Verse 35, the good person out of his good treasure brings forth good. And the evil person out of his evil treasure brings forth evil. I tell you, on the day of judgment, people will give account for every careless word they speak. You see, the bully and you, you need to be careful of what you say, what you speak. You always need to be innocent as a dove, but also as wise, clever as a serpent. And the way you say things, not just what you say, but the way you say it with your Nonverbal behavior, your body language, is sometimes a lot more important than what you're saying. Matthew 10 verse 16, Behold, I am sending you out as sheep in the midst of wolves. So be wise as serpents and innocent as doves. So you can and must stand up, especially when you see the bigger picture and know that the devil is attacking you. James 4 verse 7 says, Submit yourselves therefore to God. Resist. Not stand, sit back, do nothing, run away here. It says resist the devil. And he will 
flee from you. Resist isn't a passive thing. It's active. You resist the devil. So when you see a lot of things are going wrong in your life, immediately you pray, God, protect me from all evil. In the name of Jesus Christ, if there are any demons or the devil in this area, I rebuke you in the name of Jesus. You have no right here. You fight. We're in a spiritual battle. And when it comes to a normal setting, which we know is not just normal, the first thing you need to do in a heated situation is to be calm so that you can act in the spirit, not in the flesh. Take a breath, listen to their reasoning to understand what is the real issue behind their words and address that when you are ready through the spirit leading you. James 1 verse 19 says, Know this, my beloved brothers, let everyone be quick to hear, slow to speak, slow to anger, for the anger of man does not produce the righteousness of God. And then when you speak, don't be shy. You know, if you look at the story of David and Goliath, David spoke boldly and he actually ran towards the giant. So when you are in a situation and you know what God wants you to do, stand firmly on the truth, act in boldness, confidence, and say confidently, speak clearly with God's confidence in you and with grace. Colossians 4 verse 6 says, Let your speech always be gracious, seasoned with salt, so that you may know how you ought to answer each person. Sometimes a person is so in a situation that he cannot think objectively anymore. So you need to take that person out of that situation as well. I would sometimes in a conversation, if someone is so heated and so in this situation, I would talk about something totally different. Like, hey, that's a nice jacket. Where did you get that? And you can see them like <laughs> they're moving from this one conversation to the other one and it, it, they stumble a little bit, right? And then when the situation is right, I just smile and I show them love and understanding. And I say, hey, let's talk like adults. Let's not be controlled by our emotions and talk in, in this way to each other. Let's, let's think clear and let's speak in love. We can handle this better. We're adults. Your tongue is powerful. So you need to choose wisely what you say. Proverbs 18 verse 21. Death and life are in the power of the tongue, and those who love it will eat its fruits. You know, people is against physical abuse, but sometimes verbal abuse. Why doesn't no one talk about that? It is actually a lot worse because you can psychologically break someone down for the rest of their life. Or you can use your tongue to build people up. Ephesians 4 verse 29 says, Let no corrupting talk come out of your mouths, but only such as is good for building up. Too many Christians out there are so judgmental that they don't realize that they judge people in a way that breaks people down instead of judging them righteously with love to try and build them up and get them back on the right path. It says only to speak in such a way to build people up, such as is good for building up, as fits the occasion, that it may give grace to those who hear. So you never let your emotions control you. You're not a slave of your emotions. You control it under the Lordship of Jesus Christ. So you bring every thought captive to bring it under His control. I talked about that a lot in a few videos. I hope you're starting to sink in and you understand how to do this. So you bring those thoughts under the Lordship of Christ. You think clearly and calmly before you act. And then when you act and you see, well, it's going nowhere. And this person seems like this person does not hear what you are saying because they're so emotional. They're so in the flesh. It doesn't help that you say anything at all. You need to break the conversation and leave them. And you can tell them kindly, look, I'm not going to talk to you while you're like this. Let's talk another time. Proverbs 18 verse 2 says, A fool takes no pleasure in understanding, but only in expressing his opinion. Now there's a difference between being kind, but having confidence in Christ, being strong, and being kind and letting people walk all over you. A lot of people don't understand that verse of turning the other cheek correctly. And so they let a lot of people just walk all over them. You still need to be truthful. You need to be kind 
act in love, but you do it in full confidence in who you are in Jesus Christ. With godly confidence, you speak up, you speak clear, you stand up for yourself when you act in line with Scripture. Not everyone out there is going to like you. People are different, so you need to accept that. There's a lot of people who try to please other people. You need to please God first. He's your priority. You need to accept that people are different and not everyone is going to like you no matter what you say. That's just a fact and that is okay. And so you don't need to fear any man or woman. Hebrews 13 verse 6, so we can confidently say, the Lord is my helper. I will not fear. What can man do to me? So lastly, just to sum this all up, you need to be wise in when you defend yourself, you resist, or not just yourself, but your faith. And then when you need to turn the other cheek. And then when you sometimes just need to leave the situation. 1 Peter 3 verse 15 says, But in your hearts, honor Christ the Lord as holy, always being prepared to make a defense to anyone who asks you for a reason for the hope that is in you. Yet do it with gentleness and respect. So always be ready to make a defense for the faith that is in you with gentleness and respect, but do it boldly. And then you also need to know when you need to turn the other cheek. Jesus said in Matthew 5 verse 38, you have heard that he was said, an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. But I say to you, do not resist the one who is evil. But if anyone slaps you on the right cheek, turn to him the other also. Now here it doesn't mean a, a literal slap. You know, we, we speak like that sometimes as well. What that guy said to me was a slap in the face. And so what this means is sometimes, you know, there are small things that do not actually matter. So you don't need to make a small thing a big thing, but you can just actually ignore it. And especially the day and age we live in today, people are overly sensitive about everything. <laughs> so they make small things into huge things. They blow it up. But that is not what we as Christians do. Why? Because Romans 12 verse 18 says, if possible, so far as it depends on you, live peaceably with all. Why? Because we see the whole picture. We understand the truth of life, that our fight is not against each other. We see what is going on with this person right now. So we choose not to love their sin, but we love them and we act through the Holy Spirit. We try to live peaceably with all people, as accommodating as it is possible, according to our faith so that we might save souls for Christ. Those souls who simply do not understand even what they are saying and how wrong they are because their minds have been darkened by evil. Ephesians 4 verse 17. Now I say this and testify in the Lord that you must no longer walk as the Gentiles do in the futility of their minds. They are darkened in their understanding, alienated from the life of God because of the ignorance that is in them due to their hardness of heart. They have become callous and have given themselves up to sensuality, greedy to practice every kind of impurity. But that is not the way you learned Christ. You see, sometimes there's Christians who can be extremely rude to unbelievers and push them away from the gospel while they defend their faith. They do it all in the name of religion, but they're doing it in the flesh. And it saddens me because that is not how we, as the light of the world, true reborn Christians share the gospel. Even on this channel, when I had some premieres and there were a few times where Muslims came on and the way some Christians spoke to them, so judgmental, not in love. I was shocked by it. That is not how we share the gospel. We share the gospel in truth and in love, living peaceably with all, understanding the other person. Don't be quick to speak. Listen to hear what they think. Because how can you help them 
to understand who God is if you don't understand how they think and where they come from and what their situation is like. We need to share the gospel in truth and in love, kindness, gentleness. What did Paul say? 1 Corinthians 9 verse 20, to the Jews I became like a Jew, to win the Jews. To those under the law I became like one under the law, though I myself am not under the law, so as to win those under the law. To those not having the law, I have become like one not having the law, though I am not free from God's law, but am under Christ's law so as to win those not having the law. To the weak I became weak. To win the weak I have become all things to all people so that by all possible means I might save some. Now lastly, you don't always have to feel according to your fleshly nature, your, your emotions, that you always have to defend yourself. You know, if someone just says something wrongly that's different from what you believe, you're like, ah! You jump on your horse and you fight back. No, you only do it when the Holy Spirit wants you to do it. Be especially careful if it comes from a place of insecurity or low self-esteem. No one out there is more important than you and you are not more important than them. God loves all people. He loved us while we were still sinners. So He loves Muslims. He wants them to be saved. He wants everyone to be saved. The value of a soul is the same. And so there might be people there who might achieve bigger things according to the world than you, but it does not make them more human or more important than you. God loves us all the same and He has no favorites. Romans 2 verse 11, for God shows no partiality. Now always remember, in a world where people want Christians to stop talking, and I'm talking about the world as the media and entertainment. It's more acceptable today if you say, Oh, Lucifer, thank you for this reward on the Emmys, the Grammys, than it is to say, Thank you, Jesus Christ. Now, always remember, never be ashamed of your beliefs. You have the right to stand up for yourself if those beliefs are in line with Scripture and when the Holy Spirit wants you to stand up for your beliefs. And how can you live with yourself if you don't do it. Romans 1 verse 16, for I am not ashamed of the gospel, for it is the power of God for salvation to everyone who believes, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. Now, if you struggle with self-confidence, you need to understand the difference between self-confidence and God confidence. If you understand it, it will change your life. So please watch this video here. I'll see you there. Remember to subscribe. And before you go, always remember, life is short. So please do not waste yours. Bye guys.